Our correspondent Sumisha Naidu joins us now from the Kuala Lumpur High Court. Sumisha, earlier there was some uncertainty over whether the charges were linked to State Fund 1 MDB. Any clarity on that at this point? Well, the charge sheets themselves don't actually mention 1MDB at all. Uh, they talk about money received from illegal uh, proceeds, uh, transfers into Rosman Mansour's bank accounts amounting to more than 7 million uh, ringgit. And these are apparently uh, allegedly uh, proceeds from illegal activities. But what exactly, uh, what illegal activities and what it's linked to, that's actually not stated on the charge sheet, unlike Najib Raza, where SRC International, a former subsidiary of 1MDB, and 1MDB itself was actually put on the charge sheet. So uh, Rosma Mansour's lawyers were asked about this earlier, about the lack of 1MDB's mention in the charge sheets and whether the, the prosecution might try to bring up 1MDB during the, the case. Now, uh, Rosmar Mansour's lawyers say this is up to the prosecution to prove their case and the defence, well, they have their own plan and they're not going to reveal it just yet. Uh, so mention one more thing you could clear up for us. Prosecutors claiming Rosmar had approached a witness with a request to make a statement in her favour. But Rosmar's lawyers say this is unfounded. On what grounds then are they making these claims? Well, I was in the courtroom when this uh, police report was tendered. The prosecution is arguing that a police report was made by a Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission investigating officer on behalf of a witness for the prosecution. Now, uh, in that report, the MACC officer says that the witness was approached by Rosma Mansor and asked to give a favourable statement. So on this basis, um, the prosecution had actually argued for a high bail to be set about 10 million ringgit was their initial uh, request and they also asked that part of the condition, one of the conditions for bail for Rosma was that Rosma would, should not come into contact with any of the prosecution's witnesses. Now the judge did not agree with the bail amount, uh, she set it lower, but she did agree that Rosma Mansour should not meet with any of the witnesses. So that is one of the two conditions set in addition to the bail for Osman Mansour, one, that her passports have to be surrendered, and two, that she can't come uh, into contact with uh, witnesses on the, for the prosecution. Now, her lawyers are saying that that police report was not even made by the witness who was allegedly approached by Rosma Mansour. They are also claiming that the report has not been investigated and that Rosma has not been given a chance to respond to the allegations in the report as the police have not contacted her. Therefore, they say that this report is unfounded and should not actually be basis for uh, any claims or allegations of witness tampering. Uh, so make sure we're seeing pictures of uh, former Prime Minister Najib Razak also in that arriving at court today. Uh, could you tell us why he was at court? Well, he was there for case mention uh, because he's actually already been slapped with more than 30 charges to do with uh, corruption, abuse of power and money laundering himself. Now, uh, the case mentioned today was meant to be for the charges to do with former 1MDB subsidiary SRC International. But uh, there was some disagreements in court over the documents provided to the uh, to Najib Razak's lawyers and so the, that case mention has actually been postponed as well. Uh, so in the end Najib Razak was here to help post bail for his wife and both he and Rosma Mansour left the court together. Oh, thanks very much indeed for that Sumisha. Our correspondent Sumisha Naidu speaking to us live from Kuala Lumpur.